Today I wanted to go back over a topic I've talked about a long time ago because in the most recent version of Maya, the one I'm using here is Maya 2023, there's been some additions and changes. So if I go to the mesh menu, you'll notice booleans, you'll see here is booleans is highlighted in green with these green brackets and that's an indication of something new in this new version of Maya, something's changed. So I wanted to look at it and you can see here we have a lot of different options here, more than we used to have for booleans in this menu. I'm just going to break this off like this. And so in the original booleans video that I have on my channel, I talked about union, uh, difference, and we now have two different kinds of differences, and intersection. Union, difference, and intersection, those are the three original boolean operations that have been with Maya for a long time. However, now we have lots of different options here as well as uh, a new interface for how booleans kind of are displayed and how they work, which is pretty cool. So I wanted to kind of recap uh, the th three boolean operations I've talked about previously. Essentially, the way these operations work hasn't changed from that original video. Okay, they still kind of are the same, but they do have this new interface and things, so I thought I would uh, go over it again. So just to kind of show this off, all you really need is two polygonal objects to interact together. So let's say I make a cube here. And we can make another cube, or we can do another shape, like a sphere, for example. Here we go. Scale this up. And so the way Booleans work, in case you're not aware, Boolean, the term Boolean is kind of a, a term that's used in lots of different ways, but most commonly is in computer programming. So if you think of a Boolean operation, it's essentially yes or no, or on and off. Like uh, computer code is ones and zeros, right? Well, that one essentially in a nutshell, again, I'm not a coding expert, but in a nutshell, one means yes or one means on, and zero means no or off. And so that's essentially Boolean. Is it on or is it off? And so a Boolean here with 3D objects like this is turning one object on and off, but it's also how they interact together. So you can have, for example, the sphere carve into the cube. Wherever the sphere is, we're gonna turn it off, and wherever it's intersecting the cube is going to have an effect. So just to demonstrate that, now the first one, union, does not really demonstrate that well because what union does is it combines them together. Nothing is carving out of anything else. So we're going to skip that one just for the sake of uh, display here. And so I'm going to choose the sphere first, hold shift, and select the cube second. And I can choose either one of these difference operations, but difference A minus B, click on this one. You can see this happen. And again, this is all depending on the order. I chose the sphere first and the cube second. So the sphere is the one that gets remained. The sphere is considered the A minus B, right? So the A is the first object I selected minus or subtracting the second object, the cube, from the sphere. So this cube, wherever that cube is, gets subtracted or removed from the sphere. And we have this surface gets created in between. So a Boolean operation is a way of carving out holes and chunks of other objects using other objects, like in this way. So the new operation, you'll notice here on the uh, attribute editor over here on the right side, opened up automatically, and if yours doesn't, you can go to the attribute editor, uh, control A or command A, and go to poly boolean one tab here. If you need to click these little arrows back and forth to get to different tabs, you can. But the poly boolean one tab here shows you this new interface. This is new use it from uh, how booleans have worked before they have this interface here. So you see I have P sphere one, P cube one. We have several di different buttons over here on the right side. And so if I first go to this little drop down menu, you can see here we can change the operation that I chose. So even after doing an operation like this difference A minus B, if I decide, you know what, I don't like that one, I don't have to undo or anything like that. I can actually just go to this little menu and I can say, you know what, I want to do difference B minus A actually. And I can click that and immediately you can see the difference occur where the sphere is now carving out from the cube B minus A, the second object minus the first object in this case. So you can switch back and forth really easily. I can also do an intersection. So what the intersection operation does, as you can see here, is that wherever these two objects intersect, that is the object that gets created, the new object. Which you can see here in the outliner, I have P cube one, P sphere one, and then this new object has been created called poly surface one. And that's the object that's being created from the Boolean operation. So don't try to be too confused. We have three objects in the scene, the original two, this cube and sphere, and now the new object that's being created from the Boolean. 
So that's intersection. And we also have some other options here. So like I said before, union, difference, and intersection. Those are the original three, the OG Boolean operations Maya had in the past. Now we have four new options here. So we're going to get into that in just a minute. But essentially, go back to union real quick. Union is essentially combining two objects together. If I press 4 for wireframe here, you can kind of see that what union does is it combines the objects together and removes the excess where they were intersection. It's like the opposite of intersection, where intersection is showing you only where the two objects intersect. Op uh, union shows you only where they don't intersect, <laughs> okay? And, they, and it carves away where they did. So it's hard to see how it removed the geometry where it did. What's wrong with it? But if I go into wireframe, the four key, you can see here that where the green highlighted object is, this is probably surface one. And I can actually move this over here if I wanted to. You can see that the geometry of the sphere that is inside the cube has been removed. And that's what the union has done. Now you'll, you'll notice over here we have this kind of ghosting uh, representation of this object. And these are the two original objects still in their original form. And what's nice about this, go back to shaded view here, you'll notice in shaded view here, what I currently see is kind of a ghost or a wireframe of those original objects. So over here, again, in our poly boolean one attributes, we can change the display of these original objects. So we had this first button which changed the operations being used, right? But the second button here for both of these is changing the display of the original objects. So right now they're set to wireframe for both. And that's what this little white box here represents. So I could change this to shaded, for example. So now the sphere has been changed to shaded. The cube is still wireframe. And I can see them in this way. I could also say bounding box. So the sphere becomes a bounding box representing where the sphere is. That's what that means. And then I have x-ray as well, which kind of gives me, I can do that for both. There we go. It kind of gives me like a see-through shaded view of the original objects. Or I can just say, just hide them completely. Just this is and this is uh, right here. This is how booleans used to appear when you would do a boolean. It would always hide the original objects. They would always appear hidden here in the outliner, and you could still manipulate them like this. You can still move them around. You can see my uh, boolean object is reacting to when I do this, but they were always hidden. So now we have the option of actually seeing our original objects in shaded view, wireframe view, however we want to look at them. And whatever we do to them, we can still click on them like this, you see. Whatever we do to change them, it also changes what's happening to the resulting Boolean surface. So right now I have this set to union. That's kind of boring. Let's do, for example, the uh, difference. There it is. Let's flip around here. So now when I move the sphere around, you can see that resulting sphere being eating away at the cube. Even though I, that's still just right there, I can just move this sphere around and change. Oh, here we go. Change what it looks like. It kind of looks like... Uh, what those little things you do to, to put chalk on the end of a cue stick I mean, in the pool, you know, <laughs> if anybody knows what I'm talking about. So you kind of rub it on the end of the, the, the cue stick. Anyway, um, <laughs> that's what it reminds me of. And then, like I said, you can switch this. This is difference uh, B minus A. You go to A minus B. It's the same idea. I can move this sphere around, and the cube is eating away at the sphere. And I can still see that over here. Now, you'll notice whenever I put the sphere in the cube, whoop, we get an error. Like, uh-oh. It doesn't work. It just lets you know that you know that's not really working the way you think it should work, or something like that. So just be aware of that. But in any case, it's nice to be able to edit the Boolean really easily like this in a visual way. Now you could do this before in previous versions of Maya, but it wasn't really as visual as this. So this is really nice that you can do this. You can also just kind of click these little buttons here and turn off the operation completely, and you don't really get any result at all. So just wanted to show you that as well. So anyway, let's look at some of these new options that we have. So this, again, is a difference option, operation, excuse me. We had union before and intersection here. This is where it just shows where the two objects intersect, okay? Now some of the new ones we have. Here we have slice. If I choose slice, it's a little bit hard to see exactly what it did. If I go to wireframe on shaded, there we go. You can kind of see here, as I move this around, I'm getting these lines cutting into the sphere where the cube is intersecting my original sphere. You know, if you, you kind of see it there, this 90 degree angle, because the sphere is at the corner of the cube, right? Let me kind of move this out of the way here. 
And so this is a, the slice operation. So what's actually happening here? If I right click and hold and choose vertex face, you can actually see inside there, it might be a little hard to tell. Let me just zoom all the way in here. You can see that there's actually faces of that cube inside the sphere where that slice is happening. It's, it's hard for me to, oh, there it goes. I can move it and have it be set in this mode at the same time. But you kind of see, it's a little bit hard to tell, I guess, but you kind of see those surfaces of the, of the cube inside the sphere as I move it around. And that's just what the slice command does. It's actually inserting those faces of the cube inside the sphere. So I'm kind of questioning myself. Is that useful? I don't know. I could, I, you can probably imagine ways it could be useful. I'm just not picturing them in the top of my head right now. But I'm assuming that it's useful to somebody out there. Otherwise, why would they do it, right? But that is what Slice does. So that's interesting, a new option for Booleans. We also have Hole Punch. There we go. So unlike, let me go back here, unlike Difference. See, Difference fills in the hole. I can remove this wireframe on shaded there. Difference fills in that hole that the cube is creating. If I do hole punch, it actually just leaves it open. There's no surface being created where the cube is. It's just punching a hole right into the sphere. So if you don't need that surface in here, if you're just going to delete that later anyway with the, the difference uh, operation, you can use this one instead, the hole punch operation, and it just it removes that step. You don't have to delete that surface after all. That's hole punch. Then we have cutout. So cutout is kind of like intersection, right? If we go back to intersection again, same idea. It's the space of the intersection between the two objects that is being that's remaining behind, and it fills in this surface where this cube is, right? This corner of the cube is being filled in for the sphere. But I can choose cutout instead and it kind of gives the same result except does not fill in anything it just keeps the surface of the sphere and removes everything else and then last we have split edges so split edges kind of similar let me bring back the wireframe kind of similar to the other slice option split edges it gives you those lines again if I move this object over here you can see those lines being cut into the sphere as a result of the intersection with the cube right now the uh, the new one is called Slice that actually inserts those cube faces inside of the sphere in this case, but with split edges, if I go back to this vertex face mode and look inside, you'll see there's no faces of the cube inside there. It's only slicing the surface of the sphere, not inserting those uh, cube faces inside of the sphere. So it's similar, but different in what it does. But it's very similar. It gives you those edges on the sphere in case you might want to, say, bevel those or extrude those out or something like that. But it doesn't give you that surface inside the cube to worry about. You don't have to deal with that. Which I find this much more useful than the slice one myself. I, I usually don't run into the situation where I want those uh, faces inside of the sphere that way. If I did, I would usually do the difference, right? So then I'd have it like this, where I have this open hole. But I guess because the split edges, I bet you what I'm imagining it happening is we have the split edges function built in and they're like, you know what, we have this, we might as well give them the slice too, just in case they want that. <laughs> but then you can have the faces inside there as well. But in any case, I kind of like how this new uh, visual representation of Booleans works where we have this uh, visual representation that's separate from the resulting surface that we can see and you can choose how it's displayed, such as with X-ray mode, like this. That's pretty cool. And so I can move this surface over here, and I can still manipulate what happens with this surface over here. So it's kind of neat, kind of cool. I can even rotate these pieces, same idea. Rotate, scale, all that still works, just as you'd expect. And so just as I mentioned in my original Boolean video from a few years ago, the surface of the object does affect the resulting Boolean. For example, the sphere has a pole on each end, right? There where the edges kind of converge together into a, a pole, like a globe. You have to be cognizant of that, be kind of aware of that, so that if you want the pole included in your Boolean surface, you would want to rotate your sphere to include it. Otherwise, if you rotate your sphere just so, so that the pole is not included in that intersection where it's being displayed, you then only get the 
uh, I guess you call that the longitude and latitude lines of the globe, if, if they want to use the globe analogy still, and you don't get those poles involved, because that does add a lot of geometry there that may need to be cleaned up later, depending on what you're doing. So the, the whole uh, keeping your geometry clean aspect when using booleans is still very important. Um, you want to be careful not to have a lot of like little tiny, let me find a good example here. I'll zoom in really close. See, I got a little tiny triangle right there. Just about got to be careful when doing booleans. You know, you don't have a little bit of ugly geometry that doesn't really smooth very well or things like that. Just have to be aware of that when you're using booleans. That no matter what you do with booleans, the resulting surface you'd have all these controls now, which is really awesome. But even so, you still want to kind of go back and clean it up afterwards for whatever purpose you're using it for. I can right-click on say the PQ one, and I can say remove. And that'll actually remove it from the operation, see here? And now by doing so, I only have the sphere in this polyboolean menu, and it gives me this warning. It says insufficient input meshes to return a valid output. Middle drag at least one more object from the outliner to return a valid boolean mesh. So you can middle click and drag objects into this window to add to the operation. That's again, very cool feature, something new that wasn't there before. So let's say I make this cylinder. I'm going to drag that cylinder, middle click and drag, into here. And look at that, I get now that's included in the Boolean operation. What if I grab that cube? Make sure again, I have to make sure one of these objects is selected and that the poly Boolean window is open like this. And then I can middle click the cube. Look at that, I can add multiple objects to the Boolean operation. Again, this is something that's relatively new. Uh, previously, you could only do two objects at a time. You couldn't just Boolean multiple objects together like this. And so now I have, I can drag these objects around and how they're displayed. And that changes the A minus B thing, right? So they change which object is A, which object is B by clicking on these little dotted lines here and dragging their order around. You change that, uh, that order. And you can also, so I have, you can see here, P sphere one is set to difference A minus B. So now cylinder, P cylinder one is set to union currently. Now I could change that. I could say P cylinder should actually be, let's say, intersection. Oh, look at that. So now I'm getting this result. And that's a little bit strange, right? But over here I have my visual representation. So if I were to move my cylinder over here, intersecting where the sphere would be, now I'm getting like a combined result of two different Boolean operations where the hole being created by the sphere is combined with the intersection being created by the cylinder. All right, so you kind of get this cascading result. That's why it's important to have the ordering over here correct. If I change this order, I can change the cube, put it between the two, there we go. Now we're getting a big difference in how this works, but depending on the ordering of these objects together, you can get some pretty uh, different uh, results here depending on that order, which is pretty neat. Again, something you couldn't do before in the way Booleans worked previously. At least not without doing multiple Booleans in a row and trying to get that all lined up. Now we can get it all lined up in one fell swoop, which is pretty neat. So I can say, oh, I need to scale this up. I can grab this and like rotate it or something like this. I can grab my sphere and like, oh, I want to get rid of that pole or whatever. I can move it around, you know, to get some kind of odd shape like this. And presumably you can add more, you know, and they do, they're in this uh, from top to bottom order and how the operations are combined together. I can turn off the P cube, for example, and I can keep the other two and they'll still react together. So it's a very neat interface. I really am uh, impressed with it. I really like how it works. Now I will keep in mind, depending on your computer, I don't know, the way it used to be for me anyway, is Booleans had a tendency to crash. I'm hoping in this new version, maybe they're a bit more stable because they have all these new functionalities involved. So anyway, I really enjoy how this new uh, Boolean operation works. Hope you will play around with it and have some fun with it uh, and just uh, get a lot of use out of it more than even before. But in any case, if you have any questions, if I miss something, please don't hesitate to let me know. I'm really interested in continuing to play around with these new features in Maya 2023. In any case, thank you for watching. I uh, hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, and I will be glad to talk to you later.